playing space exploration, I built a starter mall, a second bigger mall, and yet another spaghetti mall. Finally, I built a warehouse mall. No more spaghetti for me. The warehouse mall is awesome. I use it on novice and even sushi belt these five resources into my train network. I built one on my Cryonite world and it provides me with the bots I need along with meteor defense ammo. The one on my barrel world also provides delivery cannon capsules. And the one on my oil world just provides me spare parts. So how does it work? At each level, the filter inserters have to bring supplies that are needed up a level. We have them wired as set filter, and so we just need to provide them signals to say what they should filter. Now, filter inserters, when you send them signals, the positive numbers are used, and the negative numbers are ignored. So we have to make our demand positive. So we'll set up a constant combinator with all the things we want, and subtract from it all the supply we already have. So the warehouse supply goes through a simple arithmetic combinator to reverse the value. It takes everything that was in there and multiplies by negative one. You add the constant combinator of demand, and voila! All of these inserters will pull up the supplies you want, if available. This is repeated at every level, where again, multiply by negative one, add a constant combinator, and send it to the filters. In order for your supplies to make it all the way up, you do have to set the constant combinator at every level, and in some cases it might fill up such that you end up using a second constant combinator. With this setup, you can ripple supplies anywhere you need to go, and as long as you update the constant combinators all the way through, you can continue to expand them all in all directions. Since this was my first warehouse mall, I experimented with forking it in multiple directions. I don't think I'd recommend this. So the warehouse mall works, it's easy to extend, and it's easy to build. On the downside, it's a bit tedious to program all the constant combinators when you're trying to ripple demand back to the beginning. The filtering is limited to five items at a time because that's the limit for the purple inserters. And because they're purple, it's a bit slowish. Four purple inserters drives the whole thing, and that's the equivalent of one red belt. It's not bad, but it could be better. This is an improved warehouse mall that fixes all the previous problems. It's a little more complicated. It'd be nice to have bots to place this. But once you've got the bots, I'm thinking I'm going to go this way from now on. Now, I'll show you how this works. Imagine you're building inserters and you need red chips because, well, the next inserter needs a red chip. Fine. You come up here, you tell the factory to build red chips. You tell this thing that if someone needs red chips, that you go ahead and insert them into the factory. But now the red chips needs copper cables and plastic bars. Well, the copper cables are built uh, down here somewhere, but no problem. I'll just say I want them here. And bam, copper cables. No one uses plastic yet, but they're available at the very start. So likewise, I'll just say, give me plastic. And voila, all the plastic flies up and it's going. I didn't have to program the combinators along the way. You'll notice I'm using the stack inserters now, and they're only getting signals when something's actually available to insert and it's demanded. So, how does this one work? All right, so for every pair of warehouses, we try to figure out what to send up. And what we want to send up is a combination of two things. One, it's what the factory above wants. And so this combinator says for everything less than zero, I'll put one, and this is basically what the guy above wants. Now this means this guy will have not just a list of everything he's holding, but negative demand for the things he wants. That's handled over here, where you specify what you want, and that just goes through a multiply by negative one and sends it back into the warehouse. So if he runs out of any of these items, he'll return a value of negative one. Likewise, we also want to keep track of what this guy has, because ultimately what we want to send is what he wants and he has, and if they're both true, we'll update this guy, the inserters. So this one looks at all the positive signals, what he has. Notice he uses the green wire because the red wire has the negatives from the demand. Well, we want a green wire. We want to know what he actually has, even if he wants something else. So that way we know we can send it through the inserters. And this one's simple. It just subtracts one. Any values that are two will come back as one. Here's a simple example. Imagine the factory above wants coal and plastic. 
and the other, the other signals. So this top guy will just output cold and plastic as ones. And if the bottom warehouse has these things, this combinator will output those three things. You put the two wires together, and the only one that has a value of two is plastic, because this guy has it and he wants it, and so the inserter is going to insert plastic. That's basically how that works. Um, the only other trick that allows the plastic demand to go all the way down is that at each level we have this other combinator that says if there's a demand, if anything that's a negative, that is to say the warehouse wants it, take that and pass it down to the next warehouse, which means he's going to want it. And that ripples all the way down. So if he wants plastic, well now he wants plastic and he wants plastic all the way down to this guy who wants plastic. And ultimately, because he wants it, this guy's going to send it up and that ripples all the way to the top. It's kind of nice just to pop anywhere you want and say, give me something, and it ripples all the way down. This approach fixes all the negatives. It's really easy to program. We get to use fast inserters, and we don't have to worry about them getting blocked because they can only handle one item. We only tell them demand they can satisfy, which means they'll quickly rotate through the demand. Now, how much does that matter? The slow inserters is kind of a small thing. Four purple is equivalent to one full red belt, and it's a mall. It doesn't have to go super fast. One red belt's probably enough, but it's now equal to three red belts, which is better. As the limit of five items, that could be a problem. Now, look at this inserter. He's limited these five items. Imagine this is his demand for these nine items. Now, it turns out five of these items basically all come from stone. And so the example warehouse I built last time, if it runs out of stone, which admittedly, if you run out of stone, you got a problem that you need stone. That's really the fix. But meanwhile, while you're out of stone, this insert is going to want to insert all these items. And even though you could build pipes higher up in the factory, the inserter will not move the iron because it doesn't see the request. And if I remove stone from this guy, he'll stop building pipes. Again, it's not a big problem, but if you're an OCD engineer and the idea that your factory is not building pipes because you're out of stone drives you nuts, well, like me then, it's a problem.